Have you ever thought about why the smartest people often choose to show quiet strength? 10 things that show that quiet is the height of contempt. The quiet stoic gives us a look into the lives of people who are very careful about the words they use, living up to the stoic ideal of thoughtful speech and inner living. Why did the Stoics make silence the most important thing in their lives, turning it into a way of life and a subtle way to talk to the world around them? Along the way, we'll find out what kinds of people are silent Stoics, those who find power in stillness, wisdom and clarity in their thoughts, as they think many things have been said about these people, but they keep a calm attitude while navigating life's rough waters. Their silence speaks to their inner strength and deep understanding of life. What can we learn about ourselves by practicing being quiet? How might our lives change if we too learned the beautiful art of silence come with us on this journey where each step is an invitation to discover and conquer? The Stoics' most important skill was the ability to keep quiet. We want you to think, ask questions, and maybe find out a fresh look at the power of stillness in your own life. Please stay with us until the end of this journey to fully understand the important lesson lessons that Stoicism teaches. Stoicism is not only a way to learn from the past, but also a way to live a better life with honor and peace from the inside out. Let's start this journey together and find the quiet power that lies at the heart of Stoic wisdom. Number one. Number one. Keep calm. Keep calm in the calm area of Stoicism. There has a lot of knowledge in accepting the quiet and being calm, which is a trait that mirrors the Stoic search for inner peace and reason. Let's look at this through the lens of Epictetus in his teachings. The Stoic philosopher eloquently summed up the essence of serenity, be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary. This advice shines a light on the Stoic way. Not only does talking less save mental energy, it also creates a calm space inside. Why do quiet Stoics project such remarkable calmness? They do this because they know the power of silence in silence. One can clearly see and process the world's constant stimuli, reacting not quickly, but with careful thought. Stillness of speech leads to stillness of mind, which is a must for the stoic virtue of serenity. Stoics who are quiet and reserved show that they are in charge of their responses. The Stoics believe that even, even though we can't control what happens in the outside world, we can control how we react to it. Their serenity is a sign of this deep inner alignment. So in the silence of the Stoic, there is wisdom, and in the calm of the Stoic, there is strength by speaking less and nurturing our inner calm. We align ourselves with the Stoic ideal and navigate life's stormy seas with grace and poise, let us therefore all strive to embody this tranquility, adopting the quiet, calm demeanor of the Stoic, and in doing so we will find the deep peace that lies within the term. Keep calm is well known and is often used to stress the importance of staying calm and collected in tough situations. History, the saying keep calm and carry on, came from a British propaganda poster made in 1939 right before the start of World World War II. It was meant to boost the spirit of the British people who were afraid of being invaded. Since then the saying has been changed and used in different situations to send a message of strength and stability effects on the mind, adopting the keep. Calm philosophy can help lower worry and anxiety by promoting a calm and in-control attitude in times of fear or stress. Telling yourself to stay calm can help you. You make decisions based on facts instead of feelings. Use in daily life. You can use this motto in everyday situations that could be stressful, like at work when you have to speak in public or with your friends and family. It helps you keep your cool, which improves your ability to solve problems and stops you from overreacting. Important in culture, Keep Calm has spread to many areas of culture and media being used in many ways, in everyday speech, social media and products. 
because so many people know it. It's an easy to relate to and comfortable phrase to use when people are having personal or group problems, critiques and limitations. Keep calm can be useful, but it's important to know that it's not an answer that works for everyone. There are times when you need to be more proactive or expressive in your answers. Emotional speech is also important for mental health, and staying calm shouldn't mean hiding your feelings. For the most part, the keep calm theme encourages people to be strong and calm, but it's important to know when to use a different approach. Number two, principle follow through. When we observe a number two, principle follow through. Person's behavior and life. We can understand whether he is a lively and talking person or a quiet and silent person. In the Stoic tradition, those who practice silence often demonstrate strict adherence to disciplinary principles that are not merely a matter of discipline, external obstacle, but a complementary composition. Inside it is a word that guides all his actions, taking as an example the history of the Stoic philosopher Epicus. He remained true to his principles despite the difficulties of slavery. He remained true to his principles. His silence is not a sign of surrender, but evidence that he respects discipline. It is one of the virtues he learned. What can we learn from the serene Stoics, whose lives demonstrated the virtues of self-control and self-restraint, that although we have no control over external events, we can control our outcomes by insisting that a principled and disciplined life leads to freedom and peace. The strength that comes from living in harmony with human principles demonstrates that discipline does not diminish, but rather provides the freedom that provides the framework within which we can move through life with grace and peace by following the virtues of obedience. We can learn how to live a real and meaningful life from the quiet stoic. They tell us that true peace and strength are not found in the noise of the outside world, but in sticking to our core values and beliefs. Beliefs let us be inspired by the quiet stoics and work to develop our own principled compliance, not as a burdensome set of rules, but as a guiding light toward a life of virtue, honesty and deep inner peace. In this way, we honor the stoic path and find true freedom and happiness in our disciplined adherence to principle number three, strength and number three, strength and adversity. Adversity. Have you ever wondered why the silent stoic stays strong through life storms? Their silence isn't a void. It's a fortress of deep resilience built into the stillness of their being that gives them unmatched strength to face adversity. Consider the story of Epicus born into slavery and later becoming one of the most influential thinkers of his time. His ability to find profound wisdom in the midst of brutal hardship shows the unbreakable spirit of a violent stoic Epicus, taught us that external events can't hurt us, only our reactions to them can in his silence. He found the strength to endure and the wisdom to turn adversity into a growth-promoting force. Why do people who speak less often show such resilience in the face of adversity? Because they are quiet. They build a strong connection with themselves that outside forces can't shake. They learn learn in the stillness of their reflection that they have the power to choose how to deal with life's challenges, a realization that fills them with unbreakable resilience. Let us be inspired by the silent stoic and use the power of silence to strengthen our resilience when we face problems. Remember the silent strength of Epicus and ask yourself how you can use this challenge as a chance to grow by adopting the stoic practice of speaking less and reflecting more. We can find a source of resilience within ourselves that gives us the strength to handle life's challenges, I not only with patience, but also with the style and knowledge of a real stoic understanding. Adversity adversity is when we face things that are hard or unpleasant and put our mental, emotional or physical health to the test. It can come in many ways, such as loss of a loved one, money problems, health crisis and problems in society. 
Realizing that problems are a normal part of life is a key part of becoming resilient, making things stronger. Being resilient means being able to get back up after something bad happens. It means getting tough, mentally, keeping a good attitude and being able to deal with problems. Mindfulness, asking for help from family and friends and learning from mistakes are all things that can help you become more resilient. What support systems do, having a strong support system, is very helpful when things are going badly in this group. Our relationships with family, friends, mentors and trained counsellors, support systems offer emotional comfort, useful information and sometimes a fresh look at a tough scenario. Getting strong through hardship problems and challenges can often help us grow, as people dealing with and getting through problems can help you learn more about yourself, care more about other people, and enjoy life. More people sometimes talk about this idea as post-traumatic growth, keeping up hope and positivity. Keeping a hopeful and positive attitude is very important. When you are going through hard times, being positive can help you deal with stress and come up with better answers. Setting small goals that you can reach being grateful and thinking about the future are all things that can help you keep a good attitude in order to get through hard times. Well, this lesson stresses how important it is to recognize problems, build resilience, get help, learn from them, and keep a good attitude number. Number four, get rid of distractions. Four, get rid of distractions. There is a deep trait among those who choose the path of silence getting rid of distractions. Picture the serene figure of Epicus, a Stoic philosopher whose life was a testament to the power of focused simplicity despite being born into slavery. Epictetus's Stoic demeanor and his commitment to a life free from the unnecessary clutter of the mind and environment made him stand out as a beacon of tranquility. Why did quiet people like? Because stress, getting rid of distractions, because they knew how important it was to focus on what really matters, virtue, wisdom, and inner peace in their world. Every unnecessary distraction was seen not just as an annoyance, but as a barrier to the cultivation of a deep reflective. By shedding these unnecessary layers, they were able to connect more deeply with their inner selves and the universal truths of life. Let's learn from the silent Stoics they teach us that by getting rid of distractions, we're not only making our lives easier on the outside, but we're also making room for our inner journey toward wisdom and self-discovery. It's not about giving up things just for the sake of giving up them. It's about making a space where our true selves can grow without being stifled by the constant noise of the world. That's why I invite you to join this stoic practice. Let's try to get rid of distractions, not only in our physical spaces, but also in our minds. By doing this, we honor the legacy of stoic philosophers like Epicus and pave the way to a life of purpose, clarity and deep inner peace. Distractions can make it hard to concentrate and get work done. Whether you're at work studying or just relaxing, managing and reducing distractions is important for staying focused and getting things done quickly. Here's how to get rid of distractions for good. Figure out what's distracting you. The first thing you need to do is figure out what is distracting you. Social media emails, noisy places and personal gadgets are all common things that can distract you. Once you know what these are, you can control them in a certain way. Set up a dedicated workspace. Having a place that is organized and only used for work or studying can train your mind to concentrate when you're there. Make sure this space is clear of junk and other things that might catch your eye. Be smart about how you use technology. Technology can be a distraction, but it can also be used to help you focus during work hours. Use apps that block busy sites or put your phone on. Do not disturb mode when you need to concentrate. Plan breaks to avoid getting burned out. It's important to make plans for regular breaks. Focus on something for 25 minutes, 
and then take a five minute break. This is called the Pomodoro Technique Fix. Any personal problems that are bothering you or just take a break, when you come back to your job, you'll be more focused, make plans and goals that are clear. Making sure you know exactly what you need to do can help you stay inspired and on track. Divide your work into smaller, more doable pieces and put them in order of importance. This keeps your mind on what's most important and makes you less likely to get distracted by less important things. By using these tips, you can make your space more focused, which will help you get more done and reduce the effects of distractions. Number five. Number five, inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength is a great quality that is often hidden like a gem in a calm stoic. It isn't always easy to see, but it's clear when you see how they can endure, persist and thrive in the face of life's difficulties. This deeply ingrained trait in the philosophy of Stoicism is not about showing how strong you are through words, but through your deeds and your unwavering determination. People who practice the Stoic virtue of speaking less often use their inner strength in a deep and powerful way. They know that the loudest statement is often made in silence, not with words, but by showing strong persistence and endurance. Their strength is not a noisy gale, but a steady breeze. They face problems not with a roar, but with a quiet, unwavering resolve. They know that life's problems are not obstacles meant to break them, but fires meant to make them stronger, using obstacles to help you grow and learn more about yourself. This inner strength gives them the serene confidence to handle life's ups and downs, knowing that their core stays the same. We can learn from this stoic example of inner strength by building our resilience, facing our trials with a quiet determination, and finding our center of peace amidst the storm. This will help us tap into a source of power that is both tranquil and power powerful. So let us embrace this stoic trait of inner strength, knowing that true fortitude doesn't always come from fanfare but often lies in the quiet depths of our being, helping us to endure, persist, and ultimately thrive. You are already halfway to becoming superior to others. I have another challenge for you. Please like and share this video comment. Comment. I want to continue. Let's continue, continue our journey today. Number six, depth of knowledge. The silent stoic is a model of calm and thoughtfulness and they have a huge amount of knowledge. Their silence doesn't mean they don't know anything. It means they are full of insight, experience and understanding in their stillness. You can feel how much they know, which shows how dedicated they are to finding wisdom and truth. Think about the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca, whose deep thoughts and introspection have been echoed throughout history. Through the ages, his works, which are full of wisdom, show that he liked to think about things, careless speech that shows that real knowledge often lives in the world of silence. Sebastian's life shows how one can develop deep understanding and clear thinking in the peace of their own mind, away from the noise of the outside world. The silent stoic shows us that depth of knowledge isn't just about gathering facts, it's about weaving wisdom into our very being. It means paying close attention, listening carefully, and thinking deeply in their silence. These Stoics have a conversation with their inner selves about the complicated parts of life and existence. They come up with insights that are like the stillness and clarity of a pond, which was influenced by the silent Stoic, accept the quiet path to learning more value. Silence is a place where wisdom can grow, where insights can take root, and where our understanding of the world and ourselves can deepen. By doing this, we honor the stoic path of seeking truth and wisdom, not through the noise of words, but through the deep clarity that comes from thoughtful silence, the depth of knowledge. Do Framework was created by Dr. Norman Webb to organize tasks based on how much thinking is needed to finish them. 
It helps teachers understand and use a wide range of learning methods from easy ones, like remembering things to more difficult ones, like thinking and planning levels of do level one, recall and reproduction tasks. Need you to remember facts or follow easy steps over and over again. For instance, remembering words or doing simple math tasks are examples, level two skills and concepts. Some tasks require you to make choices and use your skills in new ways. This could mean putting things in order, comparing and contrasting them, or figuring out what the data means, level three strategic thinking. The tasks need you to use data reason and plan. One example is solving problems with more than one step, where some solutions need to be justified, or where decisions and steps need to be explained. Level 4 extended thinking tasks need complicated reasoning, planning, and more time to look into them. Projects that need to come up with hypotheses and do in-depth studies are examples used in education. Do levels help teachers make lessons that meet a range of students' cognitive needs, and make sure that students don't just remember things they also use and interact with what they've learned in a deeper way, aligning assessments. When teachers match assessments with the right docket levels, they can get a better idea of how much their students understand and how well they can do tasks that vary in difficulty. This alignment makes it easier to make tests that test students' higher order thought skills. Strategies for teaching DOC levels can be used to build on previous lessons, starting with simple concepts and progressing to more difficult ones. This steady rise in difficulty helps students build their confidence and skills over time, problems and restrictions. DOC is a good way to think about how hard a job is, but it doesn't look at all parts of learning like how interested or emotionally involved a student is in the material or how the situation affects them to give students a more complete education. Teachers are told to combine DOC with other educational ideas and frameworks by making sure that tasks and tests cover a range of cognitive demands. The depth of knowledge framework can help teachers and students do their jobs better. This is because it helps students learn and understand things more deeply. Number seven, non-judgment in the quiet reflection of number seven, non-judgment. Stoicism. There is a deep quality that people who choose their words carefully, they don't judge through their stillness and awareness. Stoics accept that everyone has their own unique path filled with trials and lessons. This acceptance is not based on indifference, but on a deep understanding of our shared human condition. For example, Marcus Aurelius was a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor who, despite his power, practiced non-judgment fervently. He often wrote in his meditations about seeing others with compassion and understanding, knowing that, like him, they were doing what they thought was right, based on their own nature and knowledge. This view gave him the ability to approach others with understanding and patience instead of condemnation or judgment. What can we learn from from this stoic trait of not passing judgment, not judging others frees us from constantly judging and reacting to their actions, which makes us more humble and encourages us to treat others with the same kindness and understanding that we would want for ourselves. This trait also promotes inner peace because it frees us from the stress of constantly judging and reacting to others. Actions by practicing non-judgment we not only improve our relationships, but also grow as people, developing virtues like empathy, patience and understanding. Let us be inspired by the quiet Stoics and Marcus Aurelius and try to see the world through a lens of non-judgment. By doing this, we will be more in line with the Stoic ideals of virtue and wisdom, which will lead to a more peaceful and kind life for ourselves and those we interact with. Number eight, the way to listen deeply. Number eight, the way to listen deeply. Why does the smart Stoic listen more than they speak? This technique, which comes from Stoicism, is called the art of deep listening. It's more than just listening. It involves understanding and empathy as well. 
Stoics know that listening deeply can help you understand not only what someone is saying, but also who they are. Think about the Stoic sage Musonius Rufus. Even though he was very articulate, he saw listening as a way to true knowledge. He was able to gain insights that he could never have gained by speaking. It was through listening that he developed wisdom, compassion, and a deep connection with the world around him. What can we, as aspiring Stoics, learn from the art of deep listening? It teaches us to be present to value other people's points of view, and to know that everyone has a story that is worth hearing. By practicing this art, we develop patience, empathy, and a stronger sense of connection with those around us. I encourage you to try this Stoic practice in your next conversation. Pay attention not only to react, but also to fully understand. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this exchange? By asking yourself, how can I connect more deeply with this person? You honor the Stoic tradition by turning every interaction into a chance for growth and connection, embodying the deep wisdom that we often talk most eloquently when we choose to listen, develop presence to listen deeply. You must first be fully present in the present time, putting aside physical, like smartphones, or mental, like stray thoughts. Distractions is what this means. The person and what they have to say should be the only things that matter. Being aware is needed for this, and you can improve it by making eye contact, nodding, and using your body to show that you are paying attention. Don't judge if you want to listen deeply. You need to put aside any opinions or ideas you already have when you have an open mind. You can really hear what the other person is saying without letting your own assumptions or biases get in the way. This doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that is said, but you should give the person a chance to say what they really think. Understand understanding is the most important part of deep listening. Try to figure out how the person speaking felt and what drove them to say what they did. It's not enough to just understand what someone is saying. You have to connect with them on an emotional level by asking questions that show you understand. You can show that you are truly interested. Think about it and make it clearer. Think about what was said before, during and after listening to. Make sure you understand. This could mean writing down the speaker's main points in your own words. And if needed, asking follow-up questions to make sure you understand this keeps things clear and lets the other person know that you are paying attention to the talk. Respond appropriately. Responding in a way that is respectful and related to what was said is also part of deep listening. Your answers should show that you understand what the speaker said and are giving it some thought. As an example, you could offer support, give comments or share your own thoughts in a polite way. Deep listening is a powerful conversation skill that means really paying attention to what someone is saying so you can understand not only what they are saying, but also how they feel and what they want to say. Being present, patient, empathetic and attentive are all things that are needed. You can build stronger bonds, solve problems more effectively and learn more about other people's thoughts and feelings by listening deeply. This skill is very useful in personal relationships the workplace and other places where talking to people in a relevant way is important. Number number nine. Number nine. Humble. Humble. Have you ever noticed that people who don't talk as much give off a quiet sense of humility in the Stoic culture? This isn't just a coincidence. Stoics who are quiet show humility not just on the outside, but as a deep-seated virtue that shows what they believe they know, that wisdom isn't about proving your presence through words, but about embracing the vastness of what you don't know. Take K the Younger as an example. He was a Stoic who lived his life with an amazing blend of courage and humility. Despite playing a major role in Roman politics, he chose a life of simplicity over luxury, which shows how he lived his stoic beliefs, his modesty wasn't a sign of weakness, it was a sign of his unwavering strength and conviction. 
he spoke less and listened more and let his actions show how stoic his beliefs were. Were, what does this mean for us? The humility of silent Stoics teaches us that we can only be truly great when we know our own limitations and are willing to learn from everyone and everything. We come across it makes us think, do we listen to understand or do we listen only to respond? Are we open to the wisdom around us? Or are we limited by our own egos, by embodying the humble nature of silent Stoics? We can cultivate a life of genuine happiness and deeper connections. Being humble helps us grow change and accept that life is always changing with grace, and respect let us be inspired by the Stoics and find strength in our silence and humility, knowing that this is the way to true knowledge and understanding. Number 10. Number 10. Having self-control. Having self-control. Self-control is an important skill that helps people control their feelings, actions and impulses so they can reach their long-term goals. It's important in many areas of life such as personal relationships, school and work, and your mental health in general understand the triggers. To start figure out what feelings events or people make you act without thinking, you can control yourself if you are aware of. Of it, knowing what makes you act on impulse can help you get ready for these situations and maybe even avoid them. Create coping strategies once you know what sets you off. Come up with good ways to handle them. One way to do this is to take deep breaths, go for a walk, or talk positively to yourself. Mindfulness and meditation are two other techniques that can help you stay calm and in control. Be clear about your goals and limits. Make sure your goals are clear and attainable. This will help you stay on track and complete your tasks. Setting clear limits on what is and isn't okay to do will help you stay. Music. Self-disciplined. Learn to delay gratification. Learn to hold out for a better prize. Being able to avoid the urge to get a reward right away and wait for one later is called delayed gratification. Set small goals for yourself to practice this like saving money for a big buy instead of spending it right away when you need help ask for it. You don't have to work on your self-control by yourself. Help, advice and responsibility can come from friends, family or professionals. Talking about problems with other people can sometimes give you new ideas and ways to solve them. It's not enough to just deny yourself. Pleasures or fight temptations. You also have to be aware of how you're reacting to your feelings and wants and control them. Controlling yourself well can help you live a healthier and more happy life. They can handle disagreements better. Control harmful or impulsive urges and keep their eyes on long-term goals. Self-control is a skill that can be learned and improved over time with practice and care. It is a key factor in both personal and professional success. Stoic silence isn't just not saying anything. It's a deliberate practice that shows they have control over themselves. Stoic people know that every word they speak has meaning, so they exercise self-control by choosing their words carefully. Marcus Aurelius was a Stoic emperor who, despite the stresses of being in charge, found peace and strength in his reflective silence. His deeply personal writings show a man who was truly committed to self-control and not easily swayed by changing feelings or the upheaval of outside events. He used his silence to control his thoughts and feelings, turning them into good actions and wisdom. What lessons can we learn from these calm, quiet Stoics? Their behavior shows us how important, important it is to think about ourselves and how powerful it is to give thoughtful answers. They make us think about whether we are in charge of our words or whether our words are in charge of us. Are we aware of how our speech affects us and those around us by practicing self-controlled silence like the Stoics? We can live a more thoughtful life where our words match our actions and beliefs. This practice not only helps us grow as people and find inner peace, 
but it also makes our relationships with others better, which lets us deal with the world in a more meaningful and deliberate way. We recently learned about the ten traits of a quiet stoic as we end. Conclusion This meaningful journey today, let us carry with us the deep insights we've gained. The quiet stoic's deep reservoirs of silence teach us that true wisdom often speaks in hushed tones. Their traits, which are a mix of introspection, resilience, and discernment, guide us toward a more measured and meaningful existence. May we all find the strength to embrace a bit of stoic silence in our lives and find not only peace, but also a wellspring of enduring wisdom in its depths. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the heart of stoic contemplation. Leave a message with your thoughts and don't forget to tell everyone you know about these important ideas. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. We share. We'll see you in the next video.